Hello, my name is John Dobb and I love Japanese sake. And it just so happens that the building behind me is filled with all kinds of Japanese sake from around Japan. And what's that thing in the corner? Looks like some sort of decoration. They sure do have a lot of Japanese sake. And a lot of interior decorations. There's one out in the front and now there's one up here. They look really pretty and traditional, but I came here to drink Japanese sake. Excuse me. Hi. Yes. Yeah, I'll have the um, set of three sake, the best one, please. Hi. So, so Coming so right up. Here you are. Hmm. Oh, yeah, this is good, too. What should I have next? Hold on a second. Who are you? Hi, I'm Ninja Sensei. Oh, I'm John. John, it seems you love sake, but don't know much about it. The ball of cedar leaves at the entrance and the cask hanging from the ceiling actually have a lot to do with sake. Oh, so they're not just interior decorations? No. Sake has been called the national drink of Japan. Those objects are part of a special culture surrounding how sake is made, its history, and how it's enjoyed. Sake is wonderful to drink even if you know nothing about it. But when you have the knowledge, it tastes even better. Learning about sake seems so hard, though. Actually, no, it's not. I teach a class about sake for beginners. You should take it. Oh, sure. Okay, welcome to Sake Academy, where everyone can enjoy learning about sake. Class in session. In this program, we'll be studying sake, one of Japan's traditional alcoholic beverages, in fun and easy sessions with yours truly. Sake Academy. Here's our class schedule for today. In each class period, we'll learn about sake from a different angle. Just checking. You're not too young to drink, are you? Of course not. Great. Of course, the legal drinking age depends on the law and the customs of the place you live. But in Japan, people under age 20 are not allowed to drink alcohol. Everyone should make sure they follow the rules when sipping sake. That's right. Our first class is geography. John, why do you think sake is a distinctively Japanese beverage? Well, obviously because it's made in Japan. Come on. Well, of course that's true. But sake is the product of a miraculous combination of landscape, season, and climate. Well, that sounds really complicated. What do you mean by all that? You should see for yourself. Ninja Senin will be your guide. Senin? I'm Ninja Senin, the mentor of Ninja Sensei. It's my job to teach you all about sake. An essential element in sake making is pure fresh water. Japan is surrounded by sea, and about 60% of its land area is mountainous. Those conditions offer easy access to ample supplies of pure water. Water from the oceans turns into rain and snow that falls in the mountains. Over time, it filters down to become pure spring water. I'm totally surrounded by the natural world. The air feels great here. Isn't it wonderful? And sake depends on these natural sources of crystal clean water. Mmm, feel great. Japanese nature blesses us with pure water. Along with the best water, the key ingredient in making great sake is rice, the staple food of the Japanese people for a long, long time. But the kind of rice used in sake making is slightly different from the one we usually eat. It's called sakamai. Rice used for making sake has larger grains and a white core, the middle of a rice grain. Sakamai is also easy to liquefy. Rice planting is usually done in early summer, between May and June. Here's John in a rice paddy. Good luck, little guy. In a few months, this is going to be in a bottle of sake. 
can't wait for that. Some months later, it's time to harvest the rice. From paddies fed by pure water emerge stalks of rice heavy with golden grains. I hope our viewers get the picture. The wonder of sake is closely connected to Japan's natural circumstances. Time to start our next class. Our second period class is history. John, do you know how long people have been making sake in Japan? Well, they've been making rice for maybe thousands of years, so I guess they've been eating rice for that long. I'm sort of even jealous of them because that means they've been drinking sake for that long too, right? That's not entirely true. People have been drinking sake for a long time, but it was treated as a sacred drink for a very limited group of people. It was only about 400 years ago that ordinary people started to drink sake regularly. Sake has been treated as sacred since ancient times. That legacy lives on, especially in Japan's sacred spaces, such as Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples. At this shrine, sake is offered to the enshrined spirits every morning alongside rice and other things. It serves as a prayer for the prosperity and well-being of Japan and its people. Why do you make an offering to God every morning? Sake is made from rice, and rice is a gift from the gods. We offer sake to the sacred spirits here every day to express appreciation. We also drink sake after making the offering. It is said that divine goodness dwells in the sake. By drinking sake, it was believed that we could connect to the world of the spirits. That belief has been passed down to the present day. So John, they say sake can connect people to the gods, but it also connects people with people. Connecting people and people? I'll show you. Sake is used on special occasions. One example is a wedding ceremony. A wedding ceremony is performed before the gods to pray for the happiness of bride and groom. An offering of sake consecrates that prayer. The bride and groom exchange sips of sacred sake to symbolize an eternal pledge. There's much more to the history of sake, but that's all we have time for today. Next, we'll learn about sake making. All right, making sake. It's a science, right? Exactly. What an interesting historical building. <sighs> Japan has around 1,500 sake breweries. They're called sakagura. Their methods have been perfected over centuries. The process is in the hands of skilled artisans. Each sakagura has its own important traditions and tastes. My name is John and I've come here for the sake making process tour. Great to see you. I'm Keita Watanabe, the toji here. Each sakagura has a toji, a chief sake maker. The toji determines the flavor of that sakagura's products. He is responsible for every step of sake making. Uh, I've seen this before in other places, but what is it? It's called a sugidama. This is hung at the entrance of a brewery as a sign that a new sake has been brewed. It gradually withers from green to brown, and that color tells you how much the batch of sake has aged. The process of sake making begins with polishing brown rice and then steaming it. The rice people usually eat is polished down to about 90%. Here, we brew with rice polished down to 50%. 
the rice is usually polished to less than 70% of the original grain size. The closer to the center a grain is polished, the less unwanted matter remains, yielding a light and delicate taste. After polishing, the rice is washed, soaked, and then steamed in a steamer. The steamed rice is spread out to cool. Once it has cooled down to a certain temperature, a portion of it is carried into a separate room, sealed by a heavy door. Here is the koji room, where temperature and humidity are strictly controlled. Koji rice is made by sprinkling spores of Aspergillus orizae, known as koji mold, over steamed rice. Koji mold, which turns starches into sugars, is also used in making miso and soy sauce. It has been called Japan's national mold for its fundamental importance to food culture in Japan. Carefully hand-prepared koji rice is mixed with steamed rice, water, and yeast to make shubo, the seed mash. Yeast is cultured so that it spreads quickly. The resulting seed mash, shubo, literally means mother of sake. The shubo goes into a big tank, along with koji rice, steamed rice, and water. It's really bubbling, isn't it? This is called moromi. After about one month of fermentation into alcohol, the sake making process is almost done. Koji enzymes turn rice starch into sugars, and yeast turns these sugars into alcohol. The two processes take place at the same time. Putting in ingredients a number of times is labor intensive, but it results in efficient yeast growth, while at the same time inhibiting the growth of other microbes. Oh, it smells fruity, um, like a juice, bubbling so much. It's um, alive. Once fermentation of the moromi is completed, the liquid potion is wrung out by a filter press in the shibori process. Sake wrung out of the moromi is then filtered, pasteurized, and stored so its flavor and aroma can mature. It usually takes six months for the sake to be ready for bottling and shipment. There really are a lot of steps to make Japanese sake. It's not simple at all. Yes, but I hope you have a better understanding of the process now. Right, let's start learning the different types of sake. There are several types of sake. Junmaishu is made only with rice, koji rice, and water. Onjozushu and non-premium sake are made with rice, koji rice, water, and brewer's alcohol. Go ahead and try these two types of sake. This is Jummai Shu. Mmm, good aftertaste. It just melts. Mmm, I like this. It's a little sweet. Mmm. Sake types are also categorized by the degree to which the rice grains are polished. Sake from grain polished to at least 60% of the original size is called Ginjo Shu. If the grain is polished to at least 50%, the sake is called daiginjo shu. And this one is junmai daiginjo. Oh, this is really good. It's clear, it's really delicate, it's, it's easy to drink. Sake it tastes and smells different depending on the way it's made. That's really interesting. Okay, that completes our summary of the main types of sake. On to the next class. <laughs> Quiz time. Can you name and explain the different types of sake? Right, the one that's made from only rice is junmai shu. The one that's made from, that's smoothed out with alcohol is uh, hon, oh, it's difficult to say. Honjo Zoshu, and the one that is uh, made from specially polished rice is Ginjo Shu. Right, but there's more. You can combine the polishing ratio and method of brewing. Sake made with the grain polished to at least 60% with no brewer's alcohol added is called Junmai Ginjo Shu. Right, once you learn the pattern, it's really not that hard, is it? 
Now let's see some of the different ways of drinking sake. The various temperatures at which you can drink sake are covered by three broad terms. Reishu means chilled, Shitsuon means room temperature, and Okan means warm. When you order, say something like Junmaishu o Reishu de Ichigo kudasai. Ichigo is a common unit of volume for sake. It's about 180 milliliters. Kudasai means please. Okay, John, let's order some sake. May I take your order? Let's just say I want to order using some of the words I just learned. Um, Ginjo shu o reishu de ichigo kudasai. Certainly. All right, she understands. That's great. But okay, one more. Um, Junmai ginjo shu o o. What's the word? Um, hotto de nigo kudasai. What? Junmai ginjo shu o hotto de nigo. Is that correct? That's right. Ah, better make it super hot. Coming right up. Here's your drink. So this is a ginjo shu no reishu, chilled. Oh, very smooth, just a little fruity. I like this one. This is a junmai ginjo shu no hot, hot. It's a little hot. This doesn't taste very good. I wonder why. Good. Well, now you know the words to order sake. But asking to have your second order of sake served warm was not a good idea. With Ginjoshu, you want to enjoy the refreshing flavor. But that flavor goes away if it's heated too much. And remember, Okan doesn't mean served hot, only warm. Right. Don't take it so hard, John. Why don't I teach you not only how to drink sake on its own, but also how to enjoy it with food. So that means it's almost lunchtime, right? Sure. Let's go to a typical Japanese pub, an izakaya. This is a must visit location for any fan of sake. Let's meet our guest lecturer, Ritsuko Shimada. She's a sake stylist. Hi. A sake stylist is an expert on ways to enjoy sake matched to your individual preferences. She knows all about pairing food and sake and much more. Okay, John. Well, Japanese sake falls into four general categories of flavor. If you don't mind, Ninja Sensei. Okay. You can drink sake with any cuisine and it will go very well with your meal. Let me show you what types of dishes pair well with what types of sake. Alright, great. So lunchtime with Japanese sake. Looking forward to this. Our first dish is sashimi, raw fish. To go with it, we have a smooth and light hanjo zoshu, served shitsuan at room temperature. Mmm. Oh yeah. It's really mild. Mm. Uh, wonderful aftertaste. Mmm. The flavor is really mild, so it doesn't overwhelm the subtle flavor of the fish. It is really refreshing. It cleanses any fishiness from the palate. Here's our next dish, yakitori, grilled chicken skewers. To pair with this, we want a junmai shu with good body and served warm, okan. Okay. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. Go ahead. Mmm. Oh, yeah. It's sweet, and it, the sweetness goes really well with the sauce in the yakitori. Hmm, great pairing. The sake has enough body to match the sweetness of the sauce and carry it across the palate. Next up is tempura. Fall-flavored ginjo shu will go well with this one. 
and we're having it chilled, reishu. I like it in a wine glass for full appreciation of the flavor notes. Salt and lemon are nice to spritz up the tempera. Okay. Wow, just right out of the fryer. Mmm. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's a perfect balance between kind of a sweetness and that uh, oily and saltiness. Mm. Mm, I like it. Tempera fresh from the fryer with a spritz of lemon. When that meets a flavor-packed sake, the tempera goes down lighter, despite being a deep-fried dish. Mm. And John, make sure to drink water too when you drink sake. Drinking water in between drinks of alcohol is called yawaragi mizu. It refreshes the inside of your mouth and softens the effects of the alcohol, so you can keep enjoying the taste of the sake. If you drink water with sake, you'll have less of a hangover the next day. But of course, always remember to drink sake in moderation. Okay. Class is over now. Thank you very much for all your help. Thank you, Shimada-sensei. Well, John, how was your lunch? There are so many food and sake pairings. I want to try more. Finding great food pairings is one aspect of enjoying sake. Hmm. It's not about how you drink or how you eat, but also about this. You guessed it, John. In the next period, we'll be studying what sake is served in. All right, let's go. Look at all the different sake containers. The flasks are called tokuri and the cups are ochoko. These are used for drinking sake okan style. Kiriko is cut glass. This is great for drinking reishu. I had no idea there were so many. But this is just a fraction. Let's take a field trip to an interesting place. This shop specializes in sake containers. More than 800 different items. There are flasks for pouring sake and cups for drinking sake. Glass ones, ceramic ones, metal ones. There's sure to be a shape and material that suits your taste. Do you drink a lot of sake? Hi. In that case, how about these larger glasses? Uh, I really like this one because it has a really interesting texture to it. And like every sake has its own personality. I think the cup should have its own personality as well. Have you found something you like? Yeah, I bought this one. You have good taste, John. A gooey nomi with simple rustic appeal. We say wabi-sabi to describe something like this. Hmm, not just with your mouth and nose, you can enjoy sake with your eyes. That's right. Like the choice of sake itself, the choice of a sake cup is fun. Well, John, we've covered a lot of ground today. Class dismissed. Thank you. But I almost forgot to give you your homework assignment. I want you to find out how people enjoy sake in Japan. Well, I normally don't like homework, but this type of homework I can get used to. I better be going. He didn't even give me a chance to explain. Ah, konnichiwa. Yashansei. Hello. John has come to a bar that specializes in sake. Bars like this one stock a wide variety of sake, making it easy for novices to find one they like. In recent years, the number of bars like this has been growing. Have you ever had a sake cocktail? <laughs> Japanese sake cocktail? Because sake has such a clean flavor, it's great for mixing. Sake cocktails are becoming very popular these days, especially with women. Mm, okay, I'll try that. Cocktails made with Japanese sake are gaining popularity, especially among younger drinkers. This cocktail is a mix of cassis liqueur, grapefruit juice, and Japanese sake. Wow, 
this is really good. It's interesting because I've never thought of sake in this way, like this, because it's so non-traditional and, and casual in a cocktail. Very interesting. Now John has come to a street packed with izakaya pubs. A red lantern is the symbol of an izakaya. You can find streets like this in many Japanese cities. A great place to go if you just want a casual drink. There really are a lot of places to eat and drink around here. People having fun, like those guys over there. Wow. So what are you guys eating and drinking? Sake. 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 Wow. sake. Oh, that's the best. This looks great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. Why don't you join us? Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Oh. Come on. Hey guys, thanks a lot for the sake. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, catch right. you later. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Take care. Yeah. Whew. I finally caught up. But wait, where's John? Oh, hello. Hi, um, I'm looking for John. Do you know where he is? You went that way. That way. way. Ugh. Here you are. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. A fatty piece of Maguro sushi. The perfect sake would obviously be a Junmai Shu. Finally found you. You left before I had a chance to properly explain your assignment. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. But now seeing you're here enjoying sake like a pro, it seems like there's nothing more to teach you. Well, it's all thanks to you. Keep enjoying your sake, John. Come by. I'm sure our viewers also learned a lot about sake today, but there's so much more to experience. The world of sake is very rich and interesting. Yes, indeed. The more you learn about sake, the more enjoyable it becomes. And that's why sake is so great. So please go ahead and seek out your way to enjoy sake. Goodbye, Goodbye everyone. everyone.